Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Entering Source Chart Field Value Request Seminar. Thank you for joining us today, and my name is Deb Shea, and I'm going to be facilitating this session. And here with me today is Tim Ryan, who's part of the training team, and he's going to be monitoring the chat window where you can enter questions during the session. We'll review these questions at the end of the, the web webinar during the Q&A, and we'll answer those questions as they come in, and any questions that we don't get to answer, we will post on the parking lot on the Connect Carolina info website. Also today, I have Karen Seitz from the Business Analysis Group, who's been working on the Source Create functionality in Connect Carolina, and Chandrika Rao, the Director of Accounting Services, who's been working closely with Karen. They'll be also available to answer questions at the end of the session. Okay, so about today's webinar, it's going to be approximately 60 minutes. And remember to use the chat window to type in your questions. And we're going to be recording this webinar, and we'll post it on the Connect Carolina User Information website, along with a copy of this PowerPoint presentation. We're also going to be having uh, additional resources available to help you with creating source requests. That includes the Connect Carolina Online Help, as well as we're going to be having an upcoming CBT course on requesting new chart fields. So what are our objectives today? By the end of this webinar, you should be familiar with the source request process, know the types of source requests that you can enter into the system, and then we're going to actually go in and show you how you can create the source request in Connect Carolina. And you'll know how you'll be notified when a source request is available for use in the system. So we're going to first take a look at the overall process. And then we're going to take a moment to break it down and we can go into the procedures. So I'm going to start by taking you through a source request um, workflow. And it all starts with you the requester. And you initiate a new source request, or you request an update to an existing source in the system. After you create this in Connect Carolina, you will submit this request to your department, and they will review your request. Now, they have two options. They can deny the request and they return it back to you via the system so that you can correct and resubmit it, or you can delete the request. The other option is they approve the request, and this gets forwarded to the Accounting Services Level 1 team who reviews the request. And when they're reviewing the request, they're going to take a look to make sure that all the information is entered properly. If there's any issues, they will deny the request. It gets returned back to you and corrected and resubmitted by you, or you can delete it from the system. If they decide that everything is satisfactory, they can now enter the source description, the terms and instructions, the source attributes, and then they can approve the source request so it progresses in the workflow. Now this goes to two different areas in the system. There is one group it goes to is the business analysis group. And this is the group that actually creates the source in Connect Carolina. The second group it goes to is accounting services level two. This is the group that actually does the final review of the source request. And they review the terms of instruction and anything that's going to actually be published on the fund and source authority document. It's important to keep in mind that at this point, Accounting Services Level 2 does not have an option to deny a request. If they find that there's some issue with the source request, they may contact you directly to actually deactivate your request or delete the request in the system. After they approve this request, it gets forwarded to the controller office. 
And what the controller does is they review all the information that's going to be published on the fund and source authority document. If they find that something is not correct and it needs to be corrected, they can reject the source and it goes back to accounting services. This does not stop the source from being created in the system. It just sends it back to accounting services level two for revision and then they can send it back to the controller so that they can approve the request. When the controller approves the request, what they do is electronically sign off and publish the fund and source authority. This triggers an email that gets sent to you, the requester, and a copy also gets sent to the responsible person and the dispersing authority. And this email notification includes an attachment of the fund and source authority document. Let's go on and start and take a look at all the different types of source requests that you can enter in the system. So there's four different types. You can create a new source. You can update an existing source. You can delete a source. And you can deactivate a source. So what we're going to take uh, a moment right now is we're going to break each one down and we're going to take a look at some of the resource documents that are available to you to help you to complete these requests. So we're going to start with looking at creating a new source request. And this is usually used by the university when new funding is received, such as an endowment or a grant. And there's a lot of information that's required to enter a new source into the system. So let's just take a peek at a few of these components. One is the request categories and types. You need to have the name of the responsible person, the dispersing authority, the source title, the justification, and you need to have a minimum of one attachment. And we're going to talk about some of those attachments that are needed in just a moment. So let's take a look at the resources that are available for you to create this new source request. The Finance Division website has a source create information web page. And here there are three documents that will be very helpful in you creating a new source. There is the source create help matrix, there is the source create attribute form, and there's some data naming standards. So let's take a look at each one and we'll break it down. So the first one is the source create help matrix. This document has a listing of all the request categories. That is in the left column. And the request categories have associated source categories and subcategories. You will see, for example, we look at student fees. That is a request category. And then it's further broken down into uh, student clearing, uh, student fees clearing, student departmental fees, and student DOG directives and for the current fiscal year. So you can see how it's all broken down. Next, you have a description of the source request. And this information you'll see when we start going into the system, some of this information is filled in for you as we're creating a new source request based on the request category that's selected. Next, we have who can submit that particular type of source request in the system. And then we see any associated additional information that they need it, be needed to complete a source request. And finally, we have a listing of the types of attachments that are needed. This is the document that I would go to when I'm preparing to enter a source request in Connect Carolina. This helps me organize my information so I'll be ready to do my entry into the system. The next document we're going to look at is the source create attribute form. So this form, again, is available on the website. And what I would do is I would download it, I would save it, I would give it a name related to the source that I want to create, and I would add my initials, just so I know who created it. And then what I can do is I can use the drop-down list or the fields to complete this form, save it, and then this is the form that I'm going to actually attach and connect Carolina to help me fill in the document. This information in the source request attribute form is used by accounting services to 
apply the attribute to the new source request that you're adding in the system. Note that the source request attribute form is also used for any existing source that has any kind of changes to their attributes as well. And finally, we have a data naming standards document. So we have some fields, like description, that have a character limitation of maybe 30 characters. So what we can do in this particular situation is we can use an abbreviation that's recommended here in the system for consistency so people know what you are entering in in a title or description. This also helps out because when you're searching in the system, it helps make it so that you can have consistent ways to search. And we also recommend to avoid in titles things like the words a ah, of the because that actually causes the system to return too many results when you're searching. So now that we've gone through the different documents to help us create a source, let's take a look at updating an existing source. So here's some examples of, of updates that you may need to do. You may have a new responsible person. You may have a new dispersing authority. You may have some updates to your terms and instructions. Or you may need to add some new supporting documentation. Keep in mind, in Connect Carolina, this source has to exist in the system, and it has to already have been approved and working. So we'll take a look at those statuses when we actually take a look at how it works in the system. Next, we're going to take a look at deleting a source. So you're able to delete a new source request or a request to update an existing source. And you do this before it is submitted into the approval workflow. So nothing has been created in the system at this point. And you can delete new source requests from the system. And when you delete it, it actually removes it from the system immediately. In the case of an existing source, it maintains the source history but it deletes the request that you have made to update the source. Okay, so this is important. So it's a little bit different. And again, when we go through our example, we'll take a look at that again. So if you're taking a look at a new source and we take a look at the status in the system, you will see that it has a status of in progress. Okay, so it will not say university control approved, it will say in progress. And the other thing is, is that if you go and have a oops moment and you find out, oh, I already submitted something for approval and you really want to retract it, this is an opportunity where you can contact your department approver to ask them to deny it so that you can delete it, or you can contact adult, um, accounting services to deny it. Now, if the case happens where accounting services has approved it, then what you can do is you can do the deactivation process, which we are going to talk about right now. So deactivating a request has to do with a source that's already been created in Connect Carolina. And sometimes we do this. It's due to changes in funding or terms of instructions for existing sources or to remove a newly created source that you are not going to use in the system. Once it's deactivated in the system, it cannot be reactivated. So keep that in mind before you deactivate the source. When we go through our example in the demonstration, you'll see how there's some system checks to make sure that you confirm that you're really ready to delete a source. So now that we've taken a look at the different types of source chart field requests, let's actually go into one. We're going to go in to create a new source. In this particular example, we are going to create a new conference for the Innovation and Entrepreneurship Department. It's an e-commerce conference. So we're going to request a new source to be entered into the system. Keep in mind, when we're doing this demonstration, it's going to be entirely in PowerPoint as the source request functionality is not available to us in the training environment. But keep in mind, as I said earlier, 
you're going to have the Connect Carolina online help to help you go through step by step for entering a new source. And you will also have the requesting a new chart field CBT that will be available to you soon. So how do we navigate? We start from the main menu. We're going to use the breadcrumbs. We go to the finance menu, UNC campus, source create, source request, and add change source. And this brings us to the source request search page. Here there are two options. There's a tab of find an existing value or add a new value. In this case, because we're adding a new source, we're going to click on the add a new value tab. The add a new value tab automatically fills in the business unit of UNCCH. Secondly, there is a request category. And in this particular case, we're going to be entering a conference. I looked at my source create matrix, and I find that a conference is listed under the request category of 165. So I enter that in the system. Now I'm ready to add this by clicking the Add button. This opens up the source request tab. And you'll see that the information has been brought over from the previous screen, where it entered in the request category. And it automatically populates in the name of the conference request category. And you'll see that the request ID is listed as next. And once I save the source, it will assign a source uh, request number by the system. Next, we're going to enter in the request type. Again, I use the source chart um, create matrix. And I can see that the request type is 165B. And this is for conference workshops, and seminars. Next, I see the effective date is defaulted to today's date. The effective date is for the effective date of the source request. This is not the effective date of the fund and source authority document. I'm going to leave in today's date for this particular request. Once I enter the effective date, I notice that the questionnaire button becomes active. In this particular case, um, this source has a questionnaire associated with it. So I'm going to click on that button so that I can complete it. So remember when we were looking at the source create matrix, there was a, a column that had additional information required? Often it was asking a lot of these questions that you'll see in the questionnaire. And the first question that's being asked is, what type of conference receipts are going to be submitted? And I can mark the boxes for the types of receipts that will be used for this conference. Next, it asks the question of the estimated total annual receipts. And I can enter my answer in the text field here. Once I've entered and answered these questions, I can click the OK button. Keep in mind, this questionnaire will be different for different request categories. Now I'm back at the Source Request tab. And I need to go and enter in the request details. So first, I'm going to start by entering the requester ID. I enter the employee's PID, or I can look up using the lookup icon. Once I enter in the employee's PID, it fills in their name. I enter in their telephone number, their email address, and their campus box. Next, I'm going to enter in the responsible person. I enter in their PIN. It fills in their name. Now I'm going to enter their department ID. And you can see it populates innovation and entrepreneurship. I need to select a title. I use the list box to choose a title for that person. I enter their telephone number, email, and their campus box. Next, I need to enter the dispersing authority. I enter the PID. You see their name fills in. I also need to enter this department's ID. It happens to be the same department. Again, I choose their title from the list box. And the phone number, I enter the email and the campus box. You'll see if you scroll down beneath the request details section, I can now actually enter information that's going to be 
populated into the Fund and Source Authority document. First is a description. This description is a 30-character field. This is a time in which I may want to use the data nating conventions to help make sure that I fit all the information in those 30 characters. There's this other field beneath it called Descript Long. This information you'll see has already been filled in. This actually helps you start out a standard text that you would use for a conference or workshop or, web, um, or, or seminar. You'll see that for different request categories, different information will be filled in into the Descript Long field. Note that this field is editable. You can add information to this field. This is just to get you started in what gets put in the uh, Fund and Source Authority document. The next field below that is the source. Again, this information already comes in filled in with information that is standard associated with that request category. And you can edit this information as needed for what you want to be published on the Fund and Source Authority document. The justification field is actually a text field in which you can enter in information that's particular to this conference. This is not uh, filled in for you by the system. And finally, there's a source title. This is limited to 70 characters, and this information is what will get published on the Fund and Source Authority document. You'll notice by each of these fields, there looks like there's a little book with a check mark. This allows you to run a spell check to make sure that you don't have any incorrect uh, words that would be listed in the Fund and Source Authority document. Great. So we filled in a lot of information now for a source request. So the next thing that we need to do is we should attach at least one file attachment for this document. Now, remember when we were looking at our help page on the finance division, there was a source attribute form. Since this is a new source, this should be one of the first forms that you attach to this file. Other types of attachments that you may want to include are donor notes, presentations, or any kind of file that will support the justification for this new source. These file attachments can be any Microsoft Office document as well as PNG and JPEG files. After I have attached the document, I'm reviewing my information, and I know now that I want to save this so that a request ID gets assigned to this request. At this point in time, I realize I need to do a little bit more research before I submit this for approval. So I'm only going to save this new source request before I'm going to actually submit it for approval. And let's uh, recap what we've learned so far about creating a new source request. The first thing that we did is we added a new source request in Connect Carolina. Then we entered the request type and we completed the associated questionnaire. Then we entered the requester, responsible person, and dispersing authority information. And finally, we entered the source information, attached documents, and we saved the source request. So now that we've taken a look at the entering a new source request, let's take a look and see what happens when we update an existing source request. In this case here, we are going to use an example of the North Carolina Council of Educational Opportunity Upward Bound Academic Symposium and College Fair Source. So, again, the navigation you're going to see, it's going to become very familiar to you. It's the same. We're going to use the breadcrumb menu, main menu, finance menu, UNC campus, source create, source request, and add or change a source. Now, we come to the source request search page. In this case, we're going to use the find an existing value tab. And what I'm going to do to narrow my search re results, I'm going to enter a request category. Again, this is a conference, 
So it's 165, and I know this from the source create matrix. And to further refine the results, I'm entering the request type of 165B specifically for conferences, workshops, and seminars. And then I click the search button. The system displays the results at the bottom of the page. Now, remember we were talking about statuses. If we're taking a look at updating an existing source, it needs to have the status of university controller approved. And you'll see that we have that option here in the list. Now, also, you have already received a fund and source authority document, so you'll have a request ID, and you'll know that this is the correct request to select so that you can edit this um, source request. And this brings us back to the source request page. Now, this page looks slightly different from when you were entering a new source request. The information is already filled in, and the fields are closed. So if I want to actually create an update to this particular source, the first thing I do is I click on the Add a Change Request link. When I do this, a couple of things happen. Number one, you'll see in the top that there is a new row added to the source request. You can see there it says first one of two, okay? And it copies the information from the original source request. The things that change are now that the fields are opening for editing, and you'll see a new effective date has been listed. So what you would do is you would make sure this is the correct effective date you want to do, and you can answer any information or change information accordingly. For this example, what we're going to do is update a responsible person in dispersing authority. So I do this by first, I actually delete the PID that's in the responsible person. And I'm going to enter a new PID, and the system fills in the new responsible person's name. I'll need to edit the department accordingly, and I will also enter their title their phone number, email ID, and campus box. And you'll see that you have the drop-down box to actually select the titles for these different people. Next, I'm going to clear the PID from the dispersing authority ID. I enter in the new PID. And this fills in the new dispersing authority's information. And then I need to update the department ID, their title, their phone number, email, and campus box address. Now that I've filled in all this information, I am ready to continue. There's no other changes that I want to make at this point in time. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom of the page and save the document. Then I'm going to go back to the top and click the Source Approvals tab. This carries only the information from the top of the source request page. And then I have the, you'll see now that the request ID has been assigned. And I'm going to click the Submit button. This now will route the source update request to Accounting Services Level 1. It first goes to your department for approval, and then it goes to Accounting Services. Now, what I see here in this box here, you'll see on the top right-hand side, you'll see that this request is pending, okay? And then you'll see, remember we mentioned before that it's possible there could be multiple approvers? And you'll see that when you see the hyperlink of multiple approvers. If you click on that, you can actually see those people who can actually approve those particular requests. So now we've looked at how to add an update source request. What happens is once that request has been submitted and is completed going through the entire workflow, ending with the controller, remember I told you when the controller signs and uh, electronically signs and publishes that document, you get this email that actually comes from the controller's office and has the attachment of the updated fund and source authority document. It also has a link if you want to print off the document online as well. 
Great. So let's recap what we've done so far for updating a source request. First, we searched for the existing source. Then we updated the source. We submitted the source uh, request for approval. And then we renewed the email that came from the controller's office, confirming that the updated source request is available for use. Great. So let's switch gears now. And now we're going to take a look at deleting a source request. So remember that e-commerce conference that we were putting together and we had only saved it? We've decided that source is no longer necessary. It's possibly it's a duplicate or you're no longer going to go forward with that conference. So again, we're going to navigate just like we did before from the main menu, finance menu, UNC campus, source create, source request, and add or change a source. Now, we've already have saved this request in the system, so we're going to use the Finding the Existing Value tab. To narrow down my search results, I'm going to enter in the request category and the request type and click the search button. You'll see that the search results are now displayed at the bottom of the page. Now, this is the difference with deleting a source request you will see that it has a status of in progress, OK? So in this particular case, I know from the source request ID that I had previously that this is the correct one, and I see the status is in progress. This brings me to the source request approval page. And here, I, I see all the information. The fields are open, and they're available to, for editing because it hasn't been submitted for approval. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to scroll down. And I see all the way at the bottom, there's a button that's active and available to me. And this button is the delete a request. Keep in mind, this was a new source request. So when I click the delete button, it removes this immediately from the system. If this was an update to an existing source, it would delete just the update request, but it maintains the history of the source in the system. The system will confirm, do you really want to delete this request? In this case, you're going to say yes. So this was pretty easy. So let's just recap what we did. We searched for an existing source in the system. We clicked the delete button. And then the source request is removed from the system. OK, we're going to take a look at a deactivate a source request. In this case, we're going to take a look at the biology conference that is supported by the biology department. They've had some changes to their funding, so now they realize, oh, I need to deactivate this source. Again, the navigation is the same. We start main menu, finance menu. UNC campus, source create, source request, and add a change of source. This brings us to source request search page, and we're going to click on the find an existing value tab. Again, because this is a conference, I'm going to enter in the request category of 165 and the request type of 165B and click the search button. The search results are displayed at the bottom of the page. Now, since this is an existing active source in the system, the status is going to be university controller approved. So if you already have your fund and source authority document, it usually has the request ID on it. And this is a way for you to match the status with the request ID so you can make that selection. So I find that, and I click on it. And this opens up the source request tab. To actually start the deactivation process, I need to add a change request. And this does several things. You'll see now that it's added an additional row in the system on the top. You'll see it's added a new effective date. And all the fields are open for editing. The difference here is now we're going to click on the deactivate source code field. 
After I do that and that box is marked, you'll see that the fields are now closed for editing. You'll also see the questionnaire is active, okay? So this is important. You need to fill out this questionnaire. This questionnaire is different from when you are creating or updating a source. This questionnaire requires that you take a look at questions to consider before deactivating a source. And one of the most common questions is, do you still have any funds in that source? It needs to have a zero balance in order for you to deactivate a source in the system. So you can go to this link directly from the system, and this information is also available to you on the Finance Division website. Now I'm confirming that, yes, I, I have read the questions to consider before deactivating the source, and then I click the OK button. So next I scroll down, and I realize I should enter a justification for the deletion of this source. In this particular case, it may be that the funding has changed, or it may be that the conference is no longer going to be occurring. So here what we're going to do is fill in that information. You also need to attach a document to justify the reason for the deletion of the source. Again, a file attachments can be any Microsoft document. It can be a JPEG or a PNG file. So now I see that all my information has been entered into the system. I'm going to now click on the Source Approvals tab. This pulls in the information from the top of the source request with the request ID listed. I am now going to submit this request. Once I submit this request, the source is not fully deactivated until it is completed going through the entire approval process that we saw in the approval workflow. And you'll, you'll have a window here saying that at first it's going for departmental approval to confirm that this is truly something that is going to be deactivated. So let's recap what we've done with deactivation. We searched for an existing source. We marked it to be deactivated, and we submitted the deactivation request for approval. So I just want to go over a few key points to remember. Remember, use Connect Carolina to enter all source requests. The business analysis group actually creates the new source chart fields in the system. And you will receive two email notifications when a source has been created. One comes from the business analysis group to say that the chart field is available for use in the system. And second, you get an email from the controller with the fund and source authority document attached. You really shouldn't use the new source until after you receive the fund and source authority document and that has been signed off.